What's up guys? Welcome to Why Friends English. Today, as promised, we're going to talk about English speaking and listening games to engage your family, your classmates, your friends, whoever's learning English around you. So <laughs> anything to make it fun and engage all the different skills so that you're learning lots of integrated skills while you practice. Yeah, and it's not just about integrated skills in kind of a boring way, but it's also a way that we can do this in a community. That's why we believe better English together, because we really do believe we can have better English when we're in a community of learners. Science shows that it's a really, really good way to learn English in a in a social setting rather than just by yourself. Right. Also, it's, it is really fun. It is. And you can be silly. You can make mistakes. It doesn't matter. It's and just really fun. A lot of the games that we chose for this list are games that are a little bit more uh, flexible. So mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have a lot of resources. You don't have to have a lot of time put into them. A lot of them require no preparation whatsoever. And so they're really, really good for all ages and all skill levels. You can make them really difficult or you can make them really basic. Yeah. So... These are our top eight go-to games for our English language learning students. Absolutely. All right. So first one we're going to talk about today is Simon Says. Now, Simon Says, a lot of countries we've been to have a variation of this. But basically, one person is going to be Simon each round. And what they are going to do is they're going to say, Simon Says, stand up. And everybody stands up. Sit down. And anybody who sits down is out. So Simon Says can go really fast. It can get really complicated. It can get really crazy. You might think that college students would be too old for it, but they love this game. That's <laughs> so true. It's really fun. It's also a really good game, even if you have a lot of people. Since it's an elimination oh, yeah. game, you can have 30, even 60 people, and it goes by really fast, especially as you do bigger uh, movements like sit down and stand up and then you kind of narrow it down Turn to around and get stand on a chair yeah it it's just gets crazy and as you narrow it down to you know fewer and fewer students then you can do some harder more di more difficult things to just be so obvious about right it's yeah. also really fun to see it because it's a natural competition i would always <laughs> make my st students stand up in front of the class when it gets to around five people and then the pressure is really on them and so it's a really good listening exercise but it's also really, really fun and competitive. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. I love this one. <laughs> the next one is a game called Telephone, which mm -hmm. is probably, it's a really weird game for a lot of uh, language learners just because it's not necessarily like super active, but it, it does really practice your pronunciation. So mm -hmm. here's how the game works. What you do is one person starts and they say something quietly into another person's ear, which is where the pronunciation comes into. And they have to It's listen, only one time. Only one time. And they have to listen very carefully. And if they mishear or they don't understand what the person said, maybe they don't know the vocabulary, still they have to say what they think they heard the other person say. And if that happens, then they say the next way, the next way, the next way. And soon by the time it gets down past this huge circle of people, it's a completely different statement. And you can yeah, kind of go back and kind of track it to see how it was. And it's hilarious. Another variation of this game that involves reading and writing is you take a sentence and the teacher writes two sentences. They cover the first sentence mm -hmm. and then they pass it to the first student. The first student writes down a new sentence and then covers the teacher's last sentence. So mm. each successive reader only sees one sentence and they continue the story. And by the time you get to the end, the story is just nuts. And it's really fun and engages students well and kids love it too. Yeah. Telephone when it's spoken is is kind of difficult when you have a bigger group just because it's a lot of waiting for it to go yeah. all the way back around. But in the written one, another variation of that is that each person has their own sheet of paper. And so if it's a group of five, six, ten people, there are ten stories that are being created as the papers get passed around the uh, around the group. It, it creates a riot. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> another game that you guys can do, number three, is charades. This is a classic to you for many, many cultures, but you get a hat or a bowl, you give everybody some little pieces of paper and everybody contributes three to five words. And then each you divide the group into two, uh, two teams and each team gets one minute at a time per round to have one person go up, draw a piece of paper and act out, no voice, no sound, act out whatever's on the paper to get their team to guess right. 
and every one that they guess correctly is one point for that team. You do this until, until the bowl is empty, really. But another variation of this is called nouns. And or salad bowl, there's a lot of different names for it, to be honest, but it's basically charades, but three rounds of charades. The first round, you take that same bowl and you have people contribute to that three to five turns each. And that first round, everybody, but each person that goes up to compete can only use their voice to explain. No body language, no changes in their voice or big crazy sounds. They just can only explain around that word to try to get their team members to guess the exact word on that piece of paper. Round two is charades where you act to get your team to guess what's on that piece of paper. Round three is you can only use one word to make your team hopefully guess which paper you have. This one is really easy to make super complicated because mm. you can use up to five words, whereas charades, it would be really difficult to get your team to guess like cats riding flying pigs. It would be really difficult to get your team to guess that just by body language. But with three rounds in nouns, very easy to eventually get them to. And it's hilarious. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's also a little bit longer. Nouns is a little bit of a longer game, straight, a little bit shorter. Yeah. And so also what what's really good about both of those games is that they show the importance of various skills in English. So, for example... Body language is something that a lot of people think is kind of important. But when you're playing a game like charades, you realize that I may be able to speak English pretty well, but I really can't express myself well in my body language and vice versa. When you have nouns and you're just trying to speak it and not use your body language, you realize, oh, I've relied too heavily on my body language to try to get the other person to understand my meaning. Okay. So it's a really good lesson for everyone. And it ends up being always super hilarious. Right. Number three was charades. Number four is nouns. Number five is... Number five is go get it. Just a really good game for basic or low intermediate students because it's very concrete. Uh, it's where you say something and a person goes and grabs at things and brings it back. And so it's a really good concrete game. It's active. So it's really good for young kids to be able to actually stand up, go and mm -hmm. grab something and bring it back. But you can also make it even more complicated and more challenging by making either the terms more specific or making the terms really, really broad that it becomes kind of a scramble of who can get it first. And so it's a speed thing. It's yeah. really good with listening. Yeah. So if you say, go get me a yellow ball. I mm. mean, ideally, the whole group of people are like, where's a yellow ball? And <laughs> if you do this in a classroom, it's hilarious because we've had students like we say, bring me an empty water bottle. And so we'll have students like chugging water or we'll have some. <laughs> we had one student one day just take her bottle, like dump it on the floor and like race it up to us. It's hilarious how competitive people get over games like this yeah. it's really fun it's also really good for even like remote learning so i do this even now in my classes where i will actually have a person say go get something in your house and bring it back as fast as you can mm -hmm. and it's just really nice to get their whole total physical response going yes. on in their in their english language learning yeah it's a lot of fun so number six that we have for you guys is a blind obstacle course <laughs> so i absolutely love this one this one's probably my favorite one because it was so uh, striking to my students because the what you do is you get everyone to get paired up so each person has another person one person is blind they don't have the ability to see whether they yeah. close their eyes or get a blindfold or something like that and the other person can't touch them and they can only use their voice to be able to explain to a person how to walk through this obstacle course and i found the best thing to do is to take my students old homework that none of them want anymore and throw it in the air and just create this awful obstacle course <laughs> and they think it's awful too because uh, they're like to look down and be like oh, this is our old homework and i'm like yeah you didn't want it so i'm using it <laughs> but equally you can do it in a house where you can move the furniture or you can do something like that it's a really good way of trust uh, a really listening. good test of listening, a, a really good test of actually using your body. Again, total physical response yeah. instead of yeah. just 
listen and act or you see and you speak. So whichever team member you are. And the goal is just get across, get across first. And it's really funny when it's a big enough obstacle course that you can have two teams at the same time. Hmm. It gets would, really funny. I would have my, my students split them in half and half would go on this side, half would go on that side. And then I would actually have them try to go this way. I mean, it was a really wide obstacle it course, was a really wide space, playing yeah. area. And I'd have them try to go or past each other. And so you have one, two blind people trying to pass each other and two people that are helping them saying, no, 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 go left, go right, go left. But it's good to practice those like minor nuances of saying, you know, a little to the left or, uh, you know, jump, jump really big or something like that. It's, it's really good to have those kind of quantifiers or qualifiers. It's great. Another game that you can do, this one's really friendly for the car, for a van ride or a bus, whatever you're on, but this is going to be popcorn words, popcorn ABCs, popcorn numbers, and it's really good for beginners or young children. But the goal is for the whole group together to reach 10, 20, 50, whatever, whatever your words are. What you have to do is everybody has to be completely silent and say one, two, three different people at a time but being able to say it without accidentally interrupting each other. And so it gets really funny because getting to 10 is really hard. Mm. And once a group starts to get really good at it, then you add a challenge by saying only use even numbers, get to 50 or only use multiples of three and get to 27 or something like this. And it gets a lot harder because then you're engaging other things. You can do this with words that get to letters of the alphabet. Mm. So apple, boy, cat, and they just have to go in the order of the alphabet. You can do it with degrees of adjectives and adverbs and stuff. You can do all kinds of stuff with this pattern. But the idea is popcorn. It's really funny because sometimes people will wait for a, a while <laughs> hoping not to interrupt anybody because you got so high and then oh, all of a sudden you say something at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's also really good, especially on things that maybe you can't exactly see each other. So uh, maybe even on Zoom, or on a bus where you can't actually see each other's body language. Like if we can see each other's body language, it's, it's the like, game gets kind of easy because I can just kind of point at people. Yeah. But if you can't see somebody, then the game gets really tricky. So yeah. that's a really good one. And it can work for anything sequential. So anything yes. that has a sequence, whether it's ABCs or one, two, three, or do, re, mi, or anything like that, you can you can work together and to see how fast you can do it. Because inevitably, if, if you go faster, it's going to be more mistakes. Oh, yeah. It's great. That's a really good one for, especially for any, any sort of student, basic or advanced. Yep. The last one we're going to talk about today is also a really good car activity. <laughs> it's a classic car activity. Yes. And it's called, I'm going on a trip. What you do in this exercise is that you say, we're going on a trip, and you can bring something, a balloon, but you cannot bring a baboon. Oh my goodness. So can so I bring a cat? You cannot bring a cat. Can I bring a boy? You cannot bring a boy. Can I bring a... A blue? You cannot bring a blue, but you can bring a ball. So can you can bring, bring a balloon. Can I bring a yellow? You can bring yellow, yes. All right, it's double L's. Double L's. So the idea with I'm going on a trip is pattern recognition, where the uh, the, the main person, the, the teacher, or even a student, they're really good at it too, is they think of a pattern, and then people have to continually ask them questions, which is really good for asking questions or breaking the ice about what the pattern is supposed to be. But instead of asking the pattern, they ask the examples. Yes. And so can I bring a toy? No, you have to bring something with double L's. They just don't know it. This is a great way for a group to work together towards something, not against the speaker, but just trying to guess what their secret pattern is. And this can be a grammar pattern or mm -hmm. a spelling pattern, both of which are just great ways to be thinking actively, proactively. But if they spell it wrong, then that might be a little bit more difficult. It's it's great game altogether. It's also really good because you can use so many different kinds of patterns. And so you have you can have advanced students that are equally as confused as beginner students just because the pattern might be so out there. Like it could be something that's in the room or it could be something that's like the color green, something like that. You can go yeah. really crazy with that game. Well, there you go, guys. There are eight games that you can play in English with just about anybody with a wide range of ages in the same group or you can work with young kids. There's some games in here that are great for three-year-olds, and there's games that are great all the way up to your, your elderly English language learners. So it's a great way to connect and get better English together.
and we've included a copy of the instructions in the description below. So if you would like to try that out, or if you guys have any other ideas for games that would be good for uh, groups or car rides or something like that, you can post that in the comments below. Yeah. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.